Thank you for welcome to a video about the ultimate hyperlapse rig. I've been meaning to make this for a while now and I hope you enjoy my insight into why I believe this is currently the very best hyperlapse setup that you can build. This is the result of the shot straight out of camera that you just saw me shoot and we're going to loop back to the beginning to show you what it looks like when it's finished. As you can see, long exposures, extremely easy to shoot. Very nice, stable shot, and this is a little teaser of what the rig can do as well. So I shot this a uh, couple days ago. I mounted a GoPro on my head to show you the setup, and I'm going to talk you through all the parts. This is the gimbal we're using. It's the Manfrotto 300XM, which is a modular gimbal, and these are the wheels. I've made a video about these wheels before as the ultimate hyperlapse accessory. They're from newer. They're really cheap. They're like 50 quid or less. You can extend the legs like that with these little clasps and I'm extending them just so that while I'm building the setup, it's a little bit sturdier. This is a carbon fiber tripod. It's the uh, Manfrotto 190 Go three stage with twist locks. As you can see, you mount them on the, uh, the wheels like that. And here is when I realized that I need to heighten the tripod to fit into the other gap. You want to tighten that not too much at the start, but once all three legs are in, you're going to re-tighten those screws so that everything's nice and sturdy. The last thing you want to have happen when you're building your setup is that it falls over or collapses or something. So here I am putting that back on mini mode, as I call it, so you have a smaller footprint to go through large crowds. And I'm just making this a bit easier for me to build. So this is the tripod that bottom foot comes off and as you can see in the middle you unlock it and boom that now is a separate battery and stabilizer module I unlatch the lock and you just screw it into that thread on there you don't need a ball head because it's a three-way gimbal and it stabilizes in three different axes the remote pairs with the gimbal we'll talk about that later and you can wirelessly control and shoot or trigger your photos on your camera the camera I'm using for this demo is the Lumix S5 II, the shot you saw me do at the start was shot on a Lumix S5 II X. Um, I just had this camera mounted on that gimbal plate when I was recording. So <laughs> it's pretty much the same camera anyway, it doesn't really matter. So a quick uh, balancing here, not the best balance job, but you know, the point of this video is not to show you how to balance a gimbal, it is to show you how convenient it is to set this up and how great it is to shoot with. So I'm connecting just a USB-C to USB-C to the camera so that I can use the controller to trigger the photos. Because your gimbal is a little bit higher and you'll have a tired arm and shoulder when you're shooting, we're gonna use a little screen or a monitor that's powered by this mini V-Lock battery in FX Leon or L-I-O-N. I have listed all the ingredients to this tasty setup below. I'm using these mini clamps. They've got two mounting points to um, mount all of the accessories. This is a Andy Cine C5 monitor. It's super bright. It's, I'm not sure how many nits it's got, but it's bright enough for outside. It does use a little bit of battery. That's why I'm using the external battery and not just the battery plate on the back. I've also recently bought a cable that allows me to use a USB-C PD or power delivery battery via the uh, barrel plug at the bottom of the monitor. So up next is connecting more cables. Firstly, the HDMI. I used to have a coiled HDMI cable, but that's quite short and it pulls the gimbal to the side. So I've gone with this loose cable, which is Tuzo branded, I think, but it did glitch out on me a little bit. This is a D-tapped 12 volt barrel plug that I'm plugging into the monitor now to power it from that battery. And as I mentioned, yeah, you can use any other uh, battery to charge or power that monitor now. Here I'm power powering up the monitor and the gimbal. That's my phone with the GoPro footage so I can check my framing. And now uh, this remote is also powered on. I'm just setting the camera to tether mode so that it allows to be triggered from this little remote. In the video you saw at the start, um, I have that remote attached to my outfit so I can go hands-free while moving the gimbal around the crowd or whatever. Here I triggered the selfie mode and then triggered it again and as you can see it doesn't turn left right it turns left and left and left so now I have to unwind this cable. I could just unplug it and plug it back in but um, yeah we'll do that shortly. This is me heightening the setup or increasing the height. Now there's one more uh, height addition that I can do which is using the Manfrotto Gimboom which was made for this gimbal that adds like up to a meter and 
30 centimeters, I think, in height. So that's an experiment I'll be doing this week. Just to shoot from like, I don't know, two and a half meters height or almost three meters height. It's a bit of a dodgy setup because of the height and the amount of money that's mounted on the top, but it is pretty damn cool. Here I'm adjusting the gimbal uh, so it doesn't follow. It just stays locked so I can twist the whole setup around. The camera points in the same direction and the cable gets unwound. I'm noticing that the power plug or the power cable went through the HDMI cable which might pull on it so I just unplugged that and now I'm going to full length and as you can see that is pretty high. I love this tripod, I've had it for so long, um, it's just great. This is me unlocking the wheel locks and now we have a moving gimbal with a monitor once it powers up that shows me the footage. On that monitor I can have a crosshair or I can zoom into the frame that comes out of the camera so that I can really accurately target my uh, anchor point on my subject while I'm going on the path with my gimbal. As you can see, super easy to set up. That took just over a handful of minutes. And now with this, you can add ND filters on your camera and you can shoot long exposures. The only issue is the gimbal does have drift, uh, but guess what, every single gimbal I've ever seen has drift, so that is not ideal, but it is better than shooting handheld or on a monopod. You can shoot on a tripod, obviously, and maybe I'll make another video about specifics of why this is such a great setup, but I really just wanted to show you, click, click a photo, I just really wanted to show you how convenient it is to set up and how you can move through crowds and get really, really good results because the gimbal just stays level and stays stabilized and it's much faster to shoot and it's just an absolute pleasure. Plus, it looks pretty sick. <laughs> I've had a lot of people come up to me asking what I'm doing and then I show them some shots. This is another gimbal mode. You hold the M button and then you can use that um, controller as sort of a, a gyro controller. It's not ideal for turning, but for up and down, it's pretty good. You can also use the wheel on the left to set a axis to move on roll pan or tilt but yeah i just used the joystick as you can see in the video and then the trigger button which is long press the record button and then it takes a photo sometimes there was something with the wireless connection which was a bit annoying so you have to make sure that you trigger a photo every time so you set your camera to loud mode so you can hear the click and then you know you are on a run shooting some great hyperlapses here are some other shots that I shot with it, as you can see, it's just an absolute breeze. And I'm just pushing that with one hand, controlling the joystick and the shutter with the other hand. And it's just nice, you're shooting above people, so your anchor point's mostly visible if you have the right path for your hyperlapse. And the results are just fantastic. If you have any questions about this, I'd love to hear it. And yeah, I think this is a reason that a lot of professional hyperlapses these days are shot on this kind of setup because it's just a little bit of a game changer. As mentioned, everything's listed down below. Check out my free ebook, both on how to make money with time-lapse as well as how to get started with time-lapse and hyperlapse photography. And if you wanna fast track your growth and add some new income streams into your photography repertoire, you can check out my courses that are listed down below as well. Thanks for tuning in. Any questions, let me know down below. And I hope you have a great day or week or night or wherever you are. And may the clouds ever be in your favor. Bye-bye.